Hello everyone, my name is Nick, and I actually just took the Part 107 test. Uh, I've been flying a uh, drone for about a year, year and a half now. I actually have a DJI Air 2S. Um, love it so far, and this video is just more to inform you guys of what I saw in the test. I actually just took it this past Saturday, March 19th, 2022. So, would love to just help you guys out and let you know kind of a little bit of what to expect. Um, I walked out of the test thinking I failed it. I scored at 83%, so I was pretty stoked about that. Um, have been studying for about a month, month and a half, maybe just uh, four days out of the week, just you know, maybe an hour or two a night, just when I was laying around, just watching TV uh, right before bed. Um, so it, uh, I, I felt like I studied, you know, overkill, but I, I wanted to be sure that I was going to go into that test feeling very confident. And I've actually, I've got some notes here uh, with some of the videos I watched and what I did to prepare. Um, so we'll just kind of run through it. And, you know, again, this is straight my experience. This test could be different for others, but I at least want to let you guys know what I had on the test. And we'll kind of run through some things I kind of guessed on and, uh, maybe this will help you out. And, you know, I'm not here to charge anyone money like some of these guys out there asking for money throughout the video. This is purely to help you guys. Um, as far as the videos, I watched T Tony Northrow about three times. Uh, Better B-roll is a good one. I watched that one. Uh, it was kind of long, but I watched that uh, one time. Gary Glenn, he was okay, just kind of annoying, but um, I did watch him one time. And then any video really on like airspace, I definitely watch. Um, just knowing the difference between B, C, D, E, G, you need to know all those and kind of look at, um, you know, when you see those fractions on the map, the MSL, what's the surface, you know, what's, and then what's the other numbers. So definitely need to know those. And then I did find the King Schools exams, um, which I forgot what guys, I watched a video and he told me to, or told people to go watch that one and take the exam. So they had a free exam. It was King School. And I wouldn't, I would take it. Yeah, I took about four times. Don't get discouraged if you're getting bad scores. I was literally scoring probably in the 60s. I was like, man, this is not good at all. So I was getting pretty nervous, but I found that a lot of the stuff on there was not even on the test. Uh, one thing to remember too, so when you go into the test, um, everyone was pretty nice there. They just put you in a room. It's got a computer from probably early 1990s and there's a couple cameras in the room, but they gave me pen or pencil, paper, a ruler with like the miles listed out like um, institute miles and whatnot. And then also um, they gave me like a paper of how to log in and gave you a code and everything. So it they gave you two hours to take it. It took me an hour. Uh, I felt like I went pretty slow and I went back to my um, answers about two or three times just to make sure. And I'm glad I did that, which I'll kind of get into in a, a couple minutes here. Uh, the test was 175 bucks. It used to be less than that, so they must have just changed it. Um, but, it, you know, it's well worth it. As far as what to expect that I, I saw on the test, uh, they asked a question about uh, light flash frequency on a drone. That one kind of tripped me up because I really couldn't find anything in the study guides or like any videos talking about it. So um, I, that popped up. I can't remember what I put, but I put it was blinking somehow. Like it was like a seconds interval uh, because I was like, hey, you know, an airplane, obviously they have lights that blink. So why, you know, why wouldn't a drone? So don't know on that one for sure. One says something about bright lights too. Like, do you keep them on when you're flying or what happens? And one of the choices was wait till your vision is clear so i just took that one i assume i got that one that one right um know the difference between category one two and three drones uh one kind of tripped me up um it was asking about what would make a category one drone i think i put uh something about the blades being able to like lacerate skin so i wasn't too sure on that one they did ask me a question on the map where it showed like the number 11 and like uh big writing with seven like apostrophe so it was like 11 and then a seven in the apostrophe mark. Um, like it was 11 to the seventh power. And I wasn't too sure on that one. Um, know about risk management and aeronautical decision making. Know the difference in those. Um, there was one question, only one on the banked angle where you get the way of the plane and then they give you like, you know, 10, 20, 30 degrees. And there's a number like 1.5 next to it. You just times that by the way of the plane to get your answer. Piece of cake. 
Uh, there were about five questions on CTAF, so make sure you know where to look for those on um, by the airport on the map, and just make sure you know what it stands for and what it does. Uh, one kind of tripped me up was, I, I can't believe I couldn't remember this at all, but if a control tower shut down in Class D, what does it become? Does it stay the same or does it change? And I think I put stay the same, but I'm, I really don't know if I got it right or not. Um, another one too, if the, this was interesting, if the temperature slash dew spread decreases, is it fog slash cloud, thunderstorms or rain? I put fog, I really wasn't sure. Um, this one, I'm glad I rechecked my answer. Uh, there was a question where it said, what uh, caution is in the area? And it looked to me like it was a hot air balloon. And I was like, eh, I don't know, maybe I should go back and look. So I looked at the map legend, it was actually a parachute. So circled that and got that one right. Um, if a drone is completely destroyed, what must you do? Report in 14 days or nothing. And then there was a third choice. I put nothing since it was destroyed. So I just was like, hey, I mean, if it's destroyed, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's gone. So I put that, um, I think I got it right. Uh, two questions happen about like center of gravity and something about AFT. I don't really know what that stands for. Um, so know about like the center of gravity on a plane and the effects of that. Um, talked about stalls in a few questions. I kind of had to guess with those. Uh, there were a good chunk, probably between like 10 to 15 or so questions on airspace. So knowing the difference in the B, C, D, E, um, there actually was one where it said, if you're in this area, area two, would you be technically in class E, G, and it would give you like, you know, 700 foot or whatever it is. And um, if you looked at the map, it was within um, the fade and magenta circle. So it was class E starting at 700 feet, not 1200. Um, there was uh, the questions about like the personalities, like the macho and impulse. Those were cakewalk. There was one or two of those you should get easily. Uh, just common sense, basically. Uh, one question on how low altitude is for VR route. So know that. Uh, they had a choice for 700 feet, 1200, and I can't remember the third one. I put 700. Um, I think I got it right, but you guys might have to fact check me on that one. Um, two to three questions on METAR and TAF report. Easy, just make sure, I know in the Northrop video they covered that pretty good with knowing what the gusting wind is, degrees, and they, they threw in like, you know, from this time to this time, what was it? So just study the uh, METAR and TAF um, report questions. There were a couple on batteries, so just use common sense, whatever's uh, being the safest in the answer, that's gonna uh, be it. They did ask what altitudes do wind shears occur at? Um, I saw a couple different answers out there. I put all altitudes, but I thought I saw someone before put like low and they got it uh, right as well. Uh, but I think it's all altitudes. Um, um, as far as the King School exam, and this is what kind of threw me off, and I was getting like 60s on those practice tests. Uh, there were I did not get any questions on like airport markings or how to enter an airport, like nothing on coming at the 45 degree um, angle to the downwind. Nothing on pitch, roll, or yaw. Uh, nothing on taxis or knowing the angles of attack. Um, nothing on the time zone calculations. There was a couple of those in the King exam. Um, There's another guy I put out a video too. He covered like some of the new updates with like Freya zones or the ASD and uh, to know it's just for manned aircraft. Nothing came up on that. And then there was one that should be pretty easy if you just look at the fraction on the map, but it would say, you know, um, how high how high of like total feet can you go above observing the tower? And one of the um, the fractions like by the tower was, let's just say 400 and then the bottom AGL was 453. You just had to know to add 400 to the bottom. So it was 853. Um, I had to guess on about 15 of them. Um, and I think I, I must've did pretty well. I got the 83%, which is great. I'm still shocked that I, I passed it, but I'm happy. Uh, but some of the wrong guesses, um, I tried to look up the codes and it said, what does part 107 apply to civil and public or just public? And I forgot what the other one was. Um, the answer is civil. I put both civil and public. Um, one asked about the tower in class D. Oh, I think I already covered that. Sorry. Um, another I got wrong was about like remote ID and what my drone needed to have. Um, I put something about they need to know like your takeoff location and it looked like I got it marked wrong. 
Uh, balance, stability, and gravity questions. There were a couple on those. Uh, so just study up on center of gravity and I guess how that affects everything. And then there was one that falls under um, emergency planning where it would ask, you know, when deviating from part 107 uh, rules, you know, what would you have to do or what would that in entail? And I put, you need emergency backup landing, but it looks like I got, I got that one wrong. So it must be like notifying FAA or I forgot what the other choice was. So, um, but yeah, hopefully that, that'll help you guys out. I know there's a lot of videos out there I was watching. It was like some were passing, some were failing. So I was getting pretty worried, you know, for this test, especially being 175 bucks. Like I did not want to fail it. So that's why I put in a lot of studying um, and I didn't spend anything. So yeah, hi buddy, <laughs> little kid talking. Um, but yeah, hopefully that'll help. And, you know, good luck to everyone that is going to take this test. Um, again, I took it on March 19th, 2022. Um, so it's very uh, recent within the last week. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. And um, if you like, I'm going to put some more drone videos um, coming out this year. So if you want to like and subscribe, would uh, appreciate it. And I'll, I'll follow you guys back. So have a good night.